So we have uh, four brave volunteers today, and I'm hoping that all four of them will, will be with us soon, but Attila is here, and an ex-physicist. Okay, a recovering physicist, maybe? Yeah. <laughs> I'm never doing that again. <laughs> <laughs> who works for Cisco and has been writing C++ for 16 years, and he's going to show you how to use Emacs as a C++ IDE. All right, so there's my name and my handle on Twitter. I also have a blog in which I ramble about things, so you might be interested in reading that, or not, as the case may be. Okay, um, so a few years ago, um, I was using Emacs, and when I got my job at Cisco, I ended up using Eclipse CDT for about two years. I'm not entirely sure why now, I don't remember. I think it's because I was a new kid in the block and everybody else was using it and I just wanted to fit in. Um, and the experience was a bit, you know, bitter. Uh, left a sour taste in my mouth. But <clears throat> I have to admit there were certain features that I enjoyed and that made me more productive as a C++ programmer. And um, I've listed the ones that for me are important in actual descending uh, order of importance. So at the top, uh, the most important thing for me, uh, what I use the most is jump to definition. Can't live without it. Need to know where a struct is defined, a function, a macro, whatever. Got my cursor on top, I want to go to it, and I want to go to it fast. Uh, auto completion saves a lot of time. Um, if you don't know the API that well, you can hit dot, and then things pop up, and you can kind of fumble your way around. Um, on the fly syntax highlighting, this means that when you're typing your code, you don't wait for it to compile. Uh, things are happening in the background. You get a squiggly line. It'll tell you what you're doing wrong, and maybe even some um, static analysis going on there. Uh, find file and project, I don't care what directory things are. That's for the computer to know and me to find out. I just want to tell it, here's my name, here's the name of the file I want, go find it, don't care. Um, I get funny looks at work when people keep telling me where things are. It's like, I don't care. What is it called? Um, compiled one key press, not a big deal, but important for some people. And graphical debugger, that's been in Emacs for forever, but hardly anybody uses it for some reason. So I wanted to go back to Emacs, but I didn't know how because I didn't want to give up these features. And I think for about a year, uh, I, was, I constantly said to myself, if I could only get this in Emacs, I would switch. But I, I was lazy and didn't until um, I did. So the whole thing is, I, I'll show you how to get all of this in Emacs. Now, why would you want to use Emacs? Well, first of all, it's lightweight. It doesn't take that much RAM or CPU. I once had a Windows XP VM running Visual Studio, and that took less RAM than Eclipse which is ridiculous. Um, it's incredibly powerful, uh, and a lot of people don't know how or why, and to be fair, there aren't that many examples of the kind of things you can get done with it. But if you start doing macros and compiling within Emacs, and then using the error messages for the compiler to then generate new code, this is the kind of thing I'm talking about. Try doing that in Eclipse, and let me know how that works out for you. Um, it doesn't require the mouse to be productive. You can still use it. It still has menus you can click on, but you don't have to, and that for me is very good because the mouse is slow. Uh, it's accessible. You can make it do whatever you want because it's a programmable platform. Uh, so the editor changes to accommodate your habits instead of you having to change to accommodate to somebody's idea of what an IDE should do and be. Uh, there's a rich collection of packages, which means that somebody out there's probably written code to do what you want it to do. And if they haven't, you can write that code yourself. We're coders, that's what we're using the editor for. Uh, and obviously, if it's gonna make you more productive, that's a good investment of time. And <clears throat> because the, the accessible language is Lisp, you can just version control your editor configuration, which I do. That means I get it for free everywhere I go. Every computer I use has the exact same Emacs configuration. And also, you know you're a power user when you have to do git bisect to figure out why you screwed up multiple times. Why not Emacs? Uh, Emacs is for tinkers. If you want something that just works, that's not the editor for you. It's not going to happen. I told the coworker, just use Eclipse if that's uh, what you want. You have to tinker with it. You have to customize it, or else you're not going to get the benefits that, that it provides. Uh, to make things worse, the out-the-box experience is dreadful. Um, if you just install Emacs and run it, it basically doesn't do anything uh, or do it well. Uh, nearly everything is optional. You need to turn it on. And of course, if you're a beginner, you don't know where to begin. Uh, if you go look at somebody else's config, it's going to be ginormous, and you don't know which parts you're going to like or not. There's too many options. There's more than one way to do things, and more than one package may be providing similar functionality, so that can cause decision fatigue. Um, you have to go try out all these things and figure out which ones you like and which ones you don't. Um, uh, don't use Emacs if you dislike typing five closing parentheses in a row, because there will be a lot of that in Elisp. 
And your colleagues will probably think you're weird. Uh, mine do, but I don't think Emacs is the only reason why. Now, <clears throat> there are several packages for an IDE-like experience at Emacs. Some of them have been there for a very long time. You can get tagging with uh, those three. Cscope's probably the best one out of those. And it works by just tagging where uh, things are in source code, and then you can jump to them. The problem is they don't work that well. And for any project that you're likely to be paid to work on, your project's too big for these things to work. So you're going to get a lot of false positives. You're going to jump to wrong parts of the code. Uh, it, it, it can be annoying. And I've tried all three. Um, for syntax checking, there used to be this thing called FlyMake. There's a new one called FlyCheck that I recommend wholeheartedly. And it will give you the squiggly lines when you're typing. And it works with several, several different languages. Not just C and C++, but Python, Perl, you name it. Uh, people keep adding things to that um, all the time. Um, Emacs actually ships now since, I think, version 23, but I'm not sure. A package called Semantic. It's not on by default. You have to turn it on. And it also is supposed to understand the language you're working on so you can jump to definition, autocomplete, that kind of thing. But there's a problem with that, which I'll come to shortly. Uh, for autocompletion, you have two main packages. One's called autocomplete, and the other one's comp any mode for complete any. Um, they both also uh, have backends so that you can have different sources of information for the autocompletion engine to work with. Uh, both of them have engines for Clang. This is a good thing, but doesn't always work. I'll come back to that as well. And miscellaneous is Artax. Artax is awesome. I didn't write it. Somebody else did. Don't know the guy. But um, I'm using it now for C and C++ because it works so well. What it does is it leverages libclang. And there's a server and a client. And uh, the server will cache results of compilation with libclang. And then it can give you information where things are defined and all sorts uh, of other things. Now, the good thing about, uh, so FlyCheck has a thing for Clang as well. The good thing about that is it's using a compiler. The problem with Cscope and those things is they're not compilers, so they don't understand the language that well. When you have crazy if defs and, and compiler directives and dash d flags and dash includes, um, none of these packages work because they can't. If you're writing one file and you try semantic on it, sure, it will work. If all your files are in the same directory, it will work. It will know where to find things, because when you do an include, it's from that directory. But of course, any non-trivial project has include paths, has dash Ds, maybe some configuration um, uh, at build time that will happen, and things depend. Maybe you're building on Windows and Linux, and you have if defs, and things don't work that way. So that's the common problem to all of these packages. So, what are the solutions? Uh, a really bad one is to use Emacs directory variables. That's when you write a file to directory, and when you open a file in Emacs in any of its subdirectories, it will apply those variables. So you have to manually keep track of your compiler flags for every file in your project. This doesn't sound like a good thing to do. A better solution is to use a package like Projectile that does project management for you. So uh, you don't have to handle those things, so you specify in uh, this package, you, you do some command in Emacs and you tell it what the project name is and what the directories are and all of these things, compiler flags, etc. Okay, fine. But the thing is, if you're working on your own project, then you can use Projectile. But if you're in a team of people and they're using Eclipse or Visual Studio or whatever and you just happen to be wanting to use Emacs, you don't have that option. There is a build system in place. Um, and the most common one these days is probably CMake. Uh, I use it for all of my C and C++ projects. And I don't want to be uh, duplicating information that CMake already knows. CMake's already building my project. It knows what the compiler flags are. So wouldn't it be great if I could just take that information from CMake instead and pass it on to the packages that need them? Of course, they all have their own idiosyncratic ways uh, of doing this. Um, right, so my contribution is to write a, a package called CMake IDE. Um, it does what it says in the tin. I tried to make a zero config possible. So what it does is, when you open a file in Emacs, it will search up, the, and if it's a C or C++ file, it will look up the directory tree, trying to find a cmakelits.txt. Now, I can't stop at the first one, because CMake can use embedded stuff. So it keeps going up the directory tree until I can't find another one, and that one's the root. Now that it knows you're in a CMake project, because if you're not, then it doesn't do anything, because there's nothing to do, it will run CMake for you. Because this is another beauty of Emacs. You can just launch processes. You can open a socket. You can do whatever you want. Um, so it will run CMake for you. Uh, CMake will generate a compilation database in JSON with all the files in the system and all of the compiler flags. And then uh, this package that I wrote will set the variables used by autocomplete, company, flycheck, 
and we'll talk to the Artax daemon and tell it, oh, by the way, it's this directory over here. Go fetch the compilation database and, and do your magic. And all of this, all you have to do is install the packages. All happens automatically. All you do is open a file. You open a file and then these things get set. And now you have compiler-assisted IDE features, compiler-assisted by Clang, using the exact same flags you're actually using to build. So there is no way you can get a wrong definition because or else it wouldn't compile. Okay? And that's aut automatic, so let's look at how this works. Now, I've already got this open because it's a lightning talk and I don't have a lot of time, but if, if I just open Emacs on this file, uh, these things will work. So there's already squiggly lines here because either CPP check or Clank is complaining about those headers. I, I'm not sure what's going on there. This project is ancient. Uh, I would not write code like this anymore, so there's that, um, and I hope you believe me. Um, if I just put the cursor over here and I jump to definition, that thing just works. I go straight to where the macro is. It doesn't even take any time because it's cached. Uh, if I put it on it here, I'll see where this class is defined. Well, actually, that's the thing there. Uh, it's a forward declaration, but okay. In this case, that's all it gets. Um, there's all sorts of things. This is all being powered by our tags. Um, if I wanted to do, I don't know, uh, here's a M weapons something, right? So if I try to do this and try to write complete, uh, I get the demo effect and it's not working. Okay. But normally that auto completes, believe me. Just, just trust me, it works. Oh, right, okay, it just took a while. Uh, sometimes it does because it needs to cache the stuff. Yeah, I don't know why it's taking so long. It's got some, yeah, so one of the backends ended up um, replying, and then you get all of these, which are all methods defined on that thing. I'm kind of experimenting my configuration as well. Um, but it, it does some pretty cool stuff as well. This is a, a different project here. Oh, wait. Um, so this is some, some of the Google test uh, um, source code. I just picked it because um, it's, it's um, open source and I won't get into trouble. But maybe I don't know if I'll be better. No, this is the one. I was trying to show, I think, this macro here. Yeah, right. So see how those things get grayed out? That's because of the compiler definitions. So it already knows. Five checks doing its magic. Now, uh, our tags can do a pre some pretty cool stuff as well. Here's a completely uh, stupid project. All I'm doing is um, with a macro defining a struct. And the reason why I'm showing this is because I want to show the results of pre-processing that file. And then on the other buffer on the left, you get the results of running the preprocessor of the entire file. Now, of course, that includes string there already uh, gives me a lot of, of uh, output because it's a, a standard library include. So what if I just want to do this region here? Not a problem. There you go. Boom. Preprocessed. That's courtesy of our tags. I'm just setting flags. I'm just telling it where to get the stuff so it can know what to do. Um, the other kind of stuff that Artax does, which is really cool as well, is, um, well, let me jump to this header. So these are all virtual functions, right? OK, what if I ask the compiler to um, find every single uh, implementation of that virtual function? Boom, done. And this is an Emacs. Now, how many of you thought that Emacs could do that before getting into this room today? That's what I thought. But it can do anything. And so um, if it doesn't do what you need, Write some code and it will. But chances are you don't have to because somebody else, like me, wrote a package to do it. So I um, hope they'll convince you that uh, this is a, a good investment to make because you get all the power of Emacs uh, with every IDE feature you, you may want. Um, the auto-completion stuff I was uh, showing here, I've had problems with auto-complete uh, recently, so I was trying comp any for a little while, so I've changed my config a little bit. So, uh, and the reason why it wasn't because it wasn't working, it was actually just because it was being slow because compiling C++ is slow, and so when you're depending on Clang to compile that structure to give you, it, it takes a while. Um, so I'm still, you know, mucking about with it. You can install this package from Melpa. You don't have to clone it from GitHub or anything like that. And uh, unless you have questions, that's me. Uh, it's that, so there's actually a standalone uh, server and a client that you need to compile. Uh, I'm not running them, so that, that would be too much setup. Emacs is running them for me. The only thing I have to do is compile them and make sure they're in the path. That's it. But as soon as it recognizes it's a CMake project, it'll start our tags in the background for you. And then uh, tell the client to connect and say, take the compiler flags from here. Sorry? 
Um, I've, I use the, the, the debugger inside Emacs as well uh, with multiple windows. It actually shows you all the local variables and stuff like that. I just didn't think I'd have time to, to put it up. Uh, so I'd have to pick up binary now, so I definitely don't have time. I had a lot of time on my hands two years ago. And I changed everything about my development environment, including operating system, shell, and IDE. I, I just went on a quest, and, and I obsessed easily, and I obsessed about my productivity, and I did nothing else for six months. <laughs> I spent two hours once picking a programming font. <laughs> well, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you.